Jenny McCarthy Show. Oh, baby, you're not the only one. Oh, yeah. Welcome back to the Jenny McCarthy Show. I'm Jenny McCarthy Wahlberg. <laughs> I'm loving the studio. It's so fun today. There's so much going on. We had a ham sandwich here. We've got some contest winners. And, of course, one of my favorite boy banders. I'm sorry to call you that, but you are. You're allowed. Lance Bass. Welcome to our show. Thanks for having me, Jenny. Um, you used to be here at Sirius, correct? Yes, right across the hallway right there. And how much did you love working here? Uh, it was great. Right? Yeah. I mean, I had so much fun because, you know, when I was in New York, I'd be able to be here, which is awesome because everyone comes through here and you yeah. have all the great interviews. But then when I was in L.A., it was at my house. So it was very intimate. Ooh. And I didn't. I could just roll out of my bed in my pajamas. So right? it was nice. Isn't that so, nice? Yeah. But, but you, you, you're you really good at what you do, not well, only um, music-wise, but also hosting-wise and acting because you just starred in New Kids on the Blocks. I sure did. Amazing <laughs> new music video. Uh, um, um, well, tell me how that happened. Uh, well, uh, Donnie called me and he was like, hey, I, I, you know, I just wrote this song. I'm going to direct, you know, help direct this video. Um, and we want you to play the professor. And of course, for me, it's a huge full circle thing because, you know, I love new kids when I was young. I camped out for tickets. And so to be able to star in the music video in 2019, it's a huge full circle for Lance Bass. Oh, my God. I love that. <laughs> yeah. and, and, like, you flew all the way in from L.A. to, mm-hmm. to, to do the video. Yeah. And you were the perfect choice. I thought you were so good. You looked so <laughs> handsome in the video. Oh, and Donnie said, you just said, make sure you tell Lance, he was just such a class act and a good guy. Aww. Like, really egoless. Well, you know, I've been in this business a long time. You you know, but usually the to... ego gets bigger <laughs> I know, I and know, angrier. Yeah. So how have you managed to undo I don't that? know. It's I, I think you just surround yourself with good people. I don't know what it is. Maybe it, it's my mom. If you see my I mom, think. yeah, she's just yeah. I think there are, it, a lot of it has to do with upbringing. Yeah. You know, and uh, and, and there's so many times I just don't I don't want to embarrass my mom. I always, you know, like my grandmother and my mom. So I do a lot of things where like, okay, if it's going to embarrass them, I won't say that or do that. And I think that's kept me out of trouble a little That's bit. really nice. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can't say the same for myself. Yeah. My mother has almost wanted to change her name just yeah. to get away from me. And I say, you know, I say, I say, fuck in this movie. And I, and every time I say it, my mom's like sitting next to me during a screening. I'm like, oh, no. oh sorry, mom. For st- real? At 39 years old, I still apologize to my mom. Oh, my yeah. God. Mm-hmm. That's so sweet that <laughs> yeah. you don't even swear in front of her. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, yeah. You can imagine my very <laughs> religious Catholic mother when yeah. I brought her to the Playboy Mansion the first time to see my Playmate of the Year party. Uh-huh. She was like, oh my God, you're going to burn in hell. I'm going to join you. I'm talking to Lance Bass. Bass his uh, new documentary, it's out now, correct? Yeah, it just came out like an hour ago. The Boy Band Con, the mm-hmm. Lou Pearlman story. Donnie and I got a sneak peek of it, and I got to tell you, for all of my uh, listeners out there, that the stuff, the docs that we love, this is one that you guys are really going to love. Why Why did you want to do this one besides the obvious? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I you know, I've... I've been making docs for you know several years now, so it's 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 the genre that I just love You're the good most. I I just love educating people and giving people, you know, a platform to speak their truths, and that's what I wanted to do with this film. So many stories of Lou Pearlman have been very salacious. The Vanity Fair article, the uh, American Greed. I wanted to do a story where people that actually knew him just told their stories and it wasn't going to be crazy you know we're making him look like the worst person in the world he it's didn't. just who was this guy and in the end you know you you're very conflicted on how to feel about him you kind of feel empathy for him and at the same time you hate him but uh, I thought this was the perfect time to do it. You know, uh, Pilgrim Media and YouTube brought it to me and said, we'd love you to help produce this. And That's I the jumped. one thing that makes a documentary, I think, good is when you can uh, allow the viewer to decide yeah. how they want to feel about somebody. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, Lou is someone that I've heard so many negative stories. So it was hard going into it right. not to like be like, I'm going to give him a break. Yeah. But um, I, I'm glad that you did show all sides. Because he you was, will. you know, he was a full person. Uh-huh. You know, had lots of layers, and obviously he was family to us. So there were really great things about Lou. Obviously, right. Um, that's what duped us. But then on the other hand, he's one of the biggest criminals we've we've ever seen. So now, was he involved in pos- Ponzi schemes before managing boy bands? Uh, we think so. Yeah, I mean, right? I think he's been doing this since the '70s. You know, he and you'll see, you know, in the film. Uh, he he created some insurance fraud schemes and um, yeah, and I think he's been doing this yeah for a very very long time. I mean, when you looked around and saw that you weren't getting paid, mm-hmm. 
I mean, even though NSYNC was like making money, how did you even handle that? Like, how does one, I, I don't know what I would do. I mean, neither did we. It was, you know, we were still so young. We had been working three years, had number one albums, biggest tours, merchandise like no other. And we still had not gotten one check yet. Not at all. And so we, you know, sat down uh, and had our first check presentation with Lou there. And he was so excited. We're at Lowry's in Los Angeles. Can you give me an age of how old you were? I was point? eight. No, I was 19, I think, okay. at this point. And uh, so, yeah, we opened up our checks, and boom, there were not as many zeros as there should have been on that check. So it was uh, immediately ripped up, and that's when we started figuring out, okay, how do we get out of this contract? So where were your parents uh, during the time of negotiations? Uh, the original ones or the this, that? After like, the we wanted, original ones, uh, I when mean, you guys were they were there. We never really negotiated anything. We just signed a contract. The contract came with the group, and the whole thing was he was the sixth member of NSYNC. So you know, we didn't have to pay for a lawyer. That was his lawyer that looked after that, and they said it was okay to sign, so we signed it. I mean, and <laughs> and think about it. You're so like naive and grateful for mm, the opportunity yeah. that you're like, oh, I'm willing to risk it. Oh my it. god, I'm 16 years old, junior in high school never even knew I would ever go into music. So yeah, when you're offered the world, you take it. I mean, who who do you think was helping him because he couldn't pull all this off? Oh, there I mean, he had tons of people. I mean, he had his inner circle, um, a lot of different partners out there, a lot of people coming out of the woodwork now. Uh, we're finding out a lot of information. There could definitely be a second documentary on his life. Right? Mm -hmm. And it wasn't just boy bands he was stealing from. Oh, no. I mean, everything. It, 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 the main thing he did was uh, a Ponzi scheme against um, these Orlando uh, residents. They, he did a Ponzi scheme around Church Street Station down, downtown Orlando and uh, stole, I think, $500 million. Oh, my yeah. God. Mm -hmm. Took, I mean, life savings away from all these elderly people. I mean, it was horrible, horrible situation. That that breaks my heart. Yeah. There's a special place in hell for people like that. I'm sorry yeah. to be so blunt. Uh, I'm talking to Lance Bass. Uh, the, the boy band con, I want to name it again so you guys have watched this documentary, the boy band con, the Lou Perlman story. Um in Backstreet Boys, O Town, talk about them. Mm -hmm. You know, it's um, these were the groups that were you know established under Transcon Records and Correct. you know Lou Pearlman. And at, during the time, we never really spoke to each other because he was pitting us all against each other. You know, so he would tell us things Backstreet Boys would say, then he would tell the Backstreet Boys what we would say, and so. Every time we'd see him at an award show or something like that, we would stay clear, which was such a good ploy for him it's, to. It's a to, genius to, it manipulative, is, yeah, because it, totally manipulative, and uh, and so it wasn't until after we disbanded that I would even talk to the other guys, and then AJ and I became really good friends, and right. you know all this stuff just started coming up, and we started swapping stories. I mean, it's almost exactly what a cult leader would do. Total cult leader, yes. No, Keep you away from yeah. certain people, so no. you just don't talk. A lot of similarities, yeah. What was the thing that put him in jail? What was that smoking gun? Um, I, Let's see. I, I know it was you know the Ponzi scheme. Um, I don't know exactly what they arrested him on because they found him in Bali, and you'll see in the movie movie how the crazy way they found this guy <laughs> like it was i mean it's a movie <laughs> like, it's it is such a, movie. a movie like you can't write this stuff um so uh yeah i mean it, it definitely had something to do with the whole ponzi scheme in orlando that's what really brought him down were you expecting some of the um boy banders to uh come out about him being a child predator mm -hmm. um you know i didn't know really what to expect i, I was thinking maybe aaron carter might have stories because that was the big rumor Correct. you know because he was the youngest and, right um, That's what the public had. Right. And so I was very excited that he agreed to do it because I'm like, well, maybe, you know, maybe this is the time that we're going to hear some like real stories come out. Right. Uh, but he defended him the whole time. And I know he was going through a hard time in his life at that point. He had just, you know, gotten arrested. And uh, so you can see that he's very tormented uh, in, in this interview still. Still tormented. I mean, like a lot of people that have been victims of abuse, mm -hmm. um, it takes time. Yeah. Uh, did you, how many people do you feel that he abused? Well, I mean, it just depends on in which way. I mean, uh, you know, sec sexually, I have sexual, no yeah. idea. Um, you know, you always hear rumors and stories. I've never been able to confirm it except, uh, listening to like Rich Cronin from LFO's, you know, his Howard Stern interview. And he, you know, gets very explicit into a story with him and Lou Perlman, which we also cover in the film. Um, but what I wanted to do with this film is just just stick with the truth. I didn't want to put any rumors in there, um, any kind of speculation. I just wanted to go with, okay, if we have confirmation, this is going in the film.
Right. Yeah. Um, did you watch Leaving Neverland? Um, I have not yet. It was interesting to watch the parents' role yeah. in all of this. Uh-huh. Um, in, in this situation, I know I brought up the parents before. What did they do? wind up doing once they realized, my child, these mm-hmm. kids are getting screwed? Yeah. Did they? How much did they get involved to help you guys? Our pa- big time. I mean, if it wasn't for you know JC's uncle, um, we wouldn't have gotten out of our contract because he led us to some really great lawyers that really figured this out because we were in it on our own and you know our parents didn't know what to do no um and so you know once we decided we were going to fight this i mean they were very supportive and of course you know once you mess your kids you know you're dead to them (laughs) so so so, i mean yeah i mean yeah you don't want to put a gun in in justin's mom's hand around loop roman because it would not be a pretty sight did you get back pay or anything no 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 because he legally stole from us so you know it's it's nothing like he was legally Mm-hmm. Stole from yeah, us. he was just taking about ninety percent of everything. So it's not like there was anything, you know, that he was keeping from us. He was just taking that big of a percent. Do, do, can you recall not actually reading the contract back then? Oh, I never read the contract. No, not at all, because my lawyers read it. Lose lawyers. Lose lawyers. Yeah. Uh-huh. So you never had a problem with him personally. Mm-mm. Not at all. Not until. Not until we decided to leave him, um, or, or at least renegotiate. It wasn't even like we were trying to get rid of him. We just wanted to renegotiate. And we were here in New York. Strauss Zelnick, who was our boss, head of BMG, was uh, our mediator. And so we sat around a table, gave our side of the story. Lou gave his side of the story. And Strauss looked at us and said, yeah, you might have one album in you. I'm going with Lou. And just left <gasps> the room. And, that, and it was all over. And then that was the last time I spoke to Lou. And the last time I saw him smile. Describe the emotions. Well, I thought my career was over because we literally thought Strauss was going to be the one to be able to say, Lou, come on, you got to be fair. Like, do this. This is what you got to do. End of story. Okay, go and make your album. But it wasn't anything like that. Um, so when we got out of that meeting, we knew that we didn't own our name anymore. So we were the ar- artist formerly known as NSYNC. Oh, and we had no label. So we knew that we were no longer signed to, to Lou so we were no longer signed to RCA so we had no label and so we no didn't label th- no money yeah and I mean Tommy Mottola you name every single record exec they all wouldn't even touch us they were like we're free if you can sign us sign us no one would touch us except Jive because they didn't believe us that we were out of this contract that's why they didn't sign you oh yeah never no one would touch us yeah and so we thought we'd have to start our own label and then we're like there's no way we'll be successful starting our own label because out of sight out of mind it's gonna take us forever so we thought our careers were done so then what happened that made you guys say, you know what, we're not done, mm-hmm. let's keep going? Well, that's uh, when Lou sued us. And so when Lou sued us, it was over the name, and that's uh, when we went to court, and the judge cited on for us to uh, you know, keep the name because her daughter has our poster on her wall. <laughs> and so she's like, these guys are obviously in sync, and Lou, you're not on her wall, so you're not in sync. So she gave us our name, and then we were wow. able to go forward with recording more music under our name. Did he trademark oh, yeah. NSYNC? Yeah, yeah. He owns all of that. That's why he said, I own NSYNC, 100%. So the judge went your way, even mm-hmm. though he trademarked it. Yeah, yeah. What an evil bastard. I know you don't have animosity towards him. It sounds like you've... Yeah, I've, I've definitely... I, I feel at peace. And it, because of this film, I feel at peace with it. That's what I was going to say. In hindsight, doing the film, yeah. looking at it, what did you take out of it? I didn't realize how much I was holding on to it. Um... And, and I had such ill feelings, and I think it was going into my personal life, too, where you would, you know, not being able to trust people as yeah, much, especially in business. Right? Yeah, and I don't know. So you, and, and I felt in doing this, and it wasn't until about, about a year and a half after we started, you know, doing all this that I started feeling really at peace with the story and unhashing everything that, that, that he did to everyone. You felt you didn't feel alone anymore. You felt like there was this bond with not only the other transcon artists, but the Ponzi scheme victims, his victims, and his childhood friends that he stole their life stories. Uh, you just feel like, wow, I'm a part of this bigger family that I never knew I was a part of. And do you forgive him? I do. Yeah, it's you know, it's it was weird for me to say, but I don't need that on my shoulders. I forgive him. I don't know what made him that way, or but you know, I. I, I can't judge it now. I mean, he, he's dead, so, I mean, 
he got he got what he got. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, let me plug it again. Uh, the, the the boy band con, the Lou Pearlman story. Um, was it tough to get the other guys to join and participate? Did you have to fight anybody? Oh, say- yeah. <laughs> the, you know, it, doing any documentary is hard to cast. Totally. Um, because no one, because it's really out of my hands, really. It's in the editor's hands after I'm done with it. So it's not just trusting me to tell the right story. It's trusting my whole team to tell the, the right story. So I can see why people are scared to say, okay, I'm going to do this because they don't know exactly how they're going to look. So, you know, I'm very humbled by the people that said yes without even, you know, batting an eye. Uh, but there are a lot of people that just didn't want to be in it. You know, Backstreet Boys, you know, they, they said, AJ will tell our story. They didn't really want to be a part of it. And the music was also really hard to get approved. Like I'm Max sure. Martin and the Backstreet Boys did not want any of their music in this film. Wow. But after watching the first cut of it, then they all changed their mind. They're Good. like, okay, now now we will support this film. Who surprised you the most out of the documentary? Huh. Well, what surprised me the most was uh, the childhood friends. Like, I didn't know any of those stories. So there were a lot, and you'll see a lot of these stories that come out in this film that you're just, your jaw drops. You're like, what? And you kind of have to chuckle. You nervously chuckle throughout this whole movie because you're like, what? That's just ridiculous. <laughs> so that's, you know, those are the things that shocked me. But I think some of my favorite interviews was Nikki DeLoach from the girl band Innocence um, and Ashley Angel Parker from O-Town. I think they were mm-hmm. tremendous storytellers. And uh, especially with Nikki's interview, I mean, I've known her for years. She used to live with us, you know, and I never knew how deep um, it went with her and how scared she was of Lou Perlman. And mm. you, you see that fear come out of her, and um, I never realized she was so tormented until now. Isn't it amazing how one person can affect so many people's lives? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's so sad, and, and that's what narcissism can do. I mean, he's, he's a complete... You know, he suffers from narcissism disorder and uh, and a sociopath, I think. Sociopath, on top of that. for sure. Yeah. What took so long to freaking catch the guy? Well, I mean, <laughs> I don't know. And, and you know, in the film you'll see um, that they, they almost had him years before the Ponzi scheme. I mean, you know, really took effect. Um, and there you'll see some FBI agents and everyone talking about it. And, you know, one of the people at the district attorney office almost had him for, you know, defrauding people in this... Uh, uh, he had this company that, you know, modeling company or whatever, and it was just very shady. So they went in there um, to see his offices. It was all set up, you know, like it was a fake office and everything. And um, and there was a new attorney general at that time. And uh, he's the one who said, yeah, look the other way, because wow. Lou had donated hundreds of thousands of dollars for his governor race. It's so fucked up, isn't yeah. it? Sorry and if it, your mom's listening. No, <laughs> but it just shows you, I mean, it's, and it, so it really unveils a lot of, you know, just corrupt at the highest places. I mean, and boy, are we seeing it now, especially mm-hmm. with celebrities. There is a lot of similarities in this film with a lot of things going on right now. Right? Yes. Yeah, a lot of parallels. I mean, no wonder why people hate celebrities. Yeah, yeah. I, I, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Speaking of celebrities, now I want to just go into a little bit because I only have a couple minutes left, but I know that you are, uh, I think you're a Housewives fan, correct? Oh, yeah. You better believe it. There was an amazing episode on last night of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, uh-huh. and there's all the whole the whole drama with Doggate, Doreen, oh, LVP. Gosh. <laughs> Where give me give me your views on what's going on right now. Um, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, Lisa's a dear friend of mine. Uh, I was just in Vegas for her opening on Saturday. Um, it is it's it's gotten so ridiculous these shows because it is now to the point where it's all about someone saying one thing and then one person miss you know miss hearing one little sen- like thing of it and then you're gonna fight about what you heard the rest of the season. It's so annoying, but the whole puppy gate. If you think Lisa goes and sells art, you know, magazine, you know, stories, it's ridiculous. Like, I mean, there's no way she would ever do that. So you're 100 percent defending LVP. Oh my gosh, yeah. Now, she, I mean, she liked to like be a shit star, of course. <laughs> I mean, totally. She, she's a total shit star. Donnie is 100 percent team LVP. Yeah, by the way. yeah. But you know, she she likes to make things interesting. And look, she she's got to help produce that show too, because I mean, it kind of gets a little stale. Well said. I mean, I'm a fan of mm-hmm. her. I I love LVP, yeah. but mm-hmm. I also wouldn't put it past her to mm-hmm. try to get ahead of a story. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I, I mean, I wouldn't either, yeah. And, uh, you know, and the thing is, and the ladies need to remember, like, don't break the fourth wall. Like, this is a TV show, right? right? And, like, just, yeah, don't and, break the fourth wall. And I keep and I always keep wondering, like, how come everyone's forgetting the fact that Dorit is the one that <laughs> dropped the <laughs> dog off? I know. You know what I mean? Yeah, she, she got through this clean. 
But uh, I look, I've been begging her to leave that show for a long time. Like, just take a little break. Just take a little break. Because she, the problem is with people like her, she cares too much about what people think. She does. You know, and you just get, you got to just be like, I don't care. Like, especially if you're on television, reality especially, like, you can't care what people think about you. And I think that comes across, which is why people thought this would be true because she wants Mm -hmm. to get ahead of the story she Mm -hmm. wants to make sure perceptions you know on her side Mm -hmm. um you being friends with her how is she handling everything right now Uh, i mean she's good she's you know very disappointed um you know and it's frustrating to be a part of a show that you don't like to do anymore um and you feel like people are attacking you and trying to set you up. I mean, it's so funny. They're all saying that she's trying to set people, but this whole time, they're the ones. I mean, look at Lisa Renna. I mean, she's been the puppet master of this whole season, but no one's, still, you know, turned it on her and said, well, you're the one setting everything up. I mean, it, it's just, it's ridiculous. I mean, definitely say the girls are throwing the gasoline on the fire. Oh, yeah. But um, I, I mean, I feel bad for LVP in many ways because mm-hmm. she's gone through a horrible yeah. tragedy. Yeah. Um, but I also see the um, the ways of her manipulation as a genius producer mm-hmm. starting to bear yeah. its fruit. Yeah, <laughs> you know she's, a I mean? she's a good producer. She's a good producer. Lance Bass, I love talking to you. Oh, thank I love you, you Jenny. Donnie just, again, says thank you. If you guys have not checked him out in their music video, how great is that song, by the way? Oh, great. It's such an earworm. Like, it's, it rolls through my head every day. Boys in the band. Boys in the band. You know, we were laying in bed, and he that's when he sometimes writes songs, and mm-hmm. he's going like, damn, I... And I'm hearing him <laughs> hum things. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm writing a song. It turns out to be Boys in the Band. He's uh, like, I got to get Lance Bass. So yeah. check that out. And also, you guys, his documentaries are all great, but for the one right now to check out, The Boy Band Con, The Lou Perlman Story. Thank you so much, Lance. Thanks for having me. Come back anytime. Oh, you know I will. All right, be right back, guys. Jenny McCarthy Show. Oh!